Hello and welcome to Wide Angle. We're back after a long hiatus and what's brought us out of our hibernation is Kanan Gopinathan, now a former IAS officer or soon to be former IAS officer who has uh, stepped down after just seven years in the service. Uh, his resignation letter doesn't really say very much about the reasons why he has left but subsequently we've come to know that uh, the stifling of freedom of expression is something that concerns him. Uh, this is obviously not good news for the administrative services which, which is always looking out for good honest independent officers. So Kanan, thank you for being with us uh, on the show to talk about this. Um, thank you. I, I'd like to know you're in Delhi, you're meeting a lot of your seniors uh, in uh, the services from your own cadre. Um, what's the response you have got from your colleagues? batchmates as well as seniors about your decision to leave are they asking you why you've done this uh, they are uh, of course uh, that they, they are little surprised uh, some of them are uh, still trying to convince me that uh, and of course with uh, all right intentions that there is the service offers a lot of mm. learning opportunity to serve and it's a long career ahead i think i have around 27 years of career ahead yeah so they are saying the contribution that you can do by being within the system is much more than the statement that you are doing or giving out now by resigning from the service. Uh, I th and they themselves are examples of how much can be contributed into the service and mm. they have done a lot of good work mm. uh, over the uh, period of time. So, yeah, but I think uh, I have sort of weighed it uh, what could be that achieved uh, by being in the service and what is it uh, the what is the importance of speaking out now uh, these uh, of course i will have to weigh it with my own uh, set of standards and uh, my own emotions but however i have weighed that and i think to speak out now uh, is more important to me i am not saying uh, whether it will be remain the same after 27 years i, I would have the same opinion hmm. after 20 years down the line if i look back but for now, I am very sure that speaking out now is important than probably staying in the service and contributing in whichever little way that I could have. But leaving a secure job uh, with a lifelong tenure in this economy is a very, very bold move. Um, did you think it through? As I said, uh, uh, you know, I was sure I will get something to work. And uh, so we were discussing uh, in family also, maybe what it would mean is instead of having uh, two ACs in both the bedrooms, you might have to live with one AC for some time. But this is a service that I entered on my merit and my capability. It should not become a weakness. It should not become a chain that if I want to leave and if I want to say something, then I should be able to say and I should be able to leave hmm. because otherwise you get defined by the service. Your individuality gets a secondary uh, or aspect of it, Your the title, the IAS or the Internet Administrative Service be takes the primary stage. So if I am good enough to be in the service, I am pretty sure I will be able to work something out elsewhere also. Hmm. I would love to of course he uh, work hard like I worked during or I studied during my uh, initial days or how I worked during my seven years I might have to put in more effort now to get back into another job as you said but I am sure I'll be able to do something uh, for my livelihood no but is, is there an inherent contradiction also in what you're saying because one of the reasons that you cite for having uh, taken this decision is to be able to express yourself freely to speak freely uh, and speak for really the citizen yes. that the administrative service is meant to work for you, yes. your twitter handle is nokarsha yeah, yeah right yeah, so yeah. i think that tells us a lot um the do you not feel that there is more you can do for the citizen you want to speak for by staying in a system and staying in a service that can improve in the delivery of uh, what they do for the citizen. Of course, uh, I think being in the system, you can do a lot. There is mm. no doubt in that. 
but as a civil servant there are two things that uh, you expect a civil servant to do one is to do the right things the other is to stand up against the wrong things both has to happen uh, in being within the system but while doing the right thing is easy because the delivery of a good thing or making a systematic improvement or getting a work done project done in time or getting a last mile delivery of services uh, efficiently and effectively these are the good things where there will be no nobody will you know in, interfere in that everybody would want that to happen in a very good way but then there is the other aspect when you know that there are some things which you don't agree to and you would want to stand up against it now if there is no sufficient voice outside the system then to do this from within the system is very difficult okay. if there is a, if let's say uh, example of uh, my territory which is dadra nagar village which i am coming from recently there were around 500 people who were asked to not come the other day the, tomorrow that please don't come for job the tribal uh, uh, people the who are on daily wages so they were asked not to come on the next day for whatever reasons administration felt now till now it has been so 500 people in this you asked this question to me that in this economy if i am leaving the job whether i'll be able to survive mm. imagine 500 tribal people um, who are working with the government being asked not to come from tomorrow from daily wage without giving any reasons to them and till now there has not been sufficient voice from outside the system that why it has happened it is the job of the media it is the job of the civil society it is the job of the opposition it is the job of citizens so the entire ecosystem which mm. is there which is other than the government had to respond to it but why do you think that's a failure of freedom of expression maybe people are just that's not a battle people want to fight no see that is a part very part because people think if i am saying this x y z what is the cost that i have to bear for yeah. it yeah so yeah, that's exactly what you said whether it is a it's battle, a worthwhile fight it's a worthwhile fight yeah whether freedom of expression should be a battle that's a question that we have to ask. No, but I, my question to you is where in your mind is freedom of expression being stifled? Why is that there is no protest or why is it that there are no enough voices for this particular example? Mm. Because people think if let's say X, Y, Z person has stood up mm. for that, then suddenly the administration behaves in a way as to find out what are the mistakes that he has done from his beginning to now. Mm -hmm. There is no explicit uh, ban on freedom of expression or a protest or a dissent but when the administration tries to find out what are the mistakes that he has done let's say be it a building by law violation that his house is having or uh, he is having a shop running in a residential place just assuming these are things mm. which is happening now if the administration tries to tackle it that way somebody is opposing against uh, 500 people's job loss and we are trying to find out that what are the is that are the, what are the faults what are the uh, mistakes that he has done in his life or even you can say corrupt practices or whatever you say hmm. and then if you try to pra target him and find out and tell him effectively that if this is the path that you want to take then these are the things that administration can do against you hmm. now how is it not effectively curbing the freedom of expression because you could have done this this a person has done some wrong thing you are absolutely free to go and do anything against it's absolutely fine but when he is raising a voice against the administration at that point of time if you try to do that then it is stifling the dissent but my question is who's raising the voice yeah that anybody any person who has been trying to do there who mm. any person and mm. i think uh, i'm just talking about my district at that point of time so there whoever why i i can show a lot of messages that i am getting right now that said please tell this please tell this 500 people have lost the job in any of the places platform that you're getting because you're getting a platform now please tell this i was in the service i was in an, in a, an officer of such a sin, uh, stature in in the in within the system mm. but i couldn't do anything about it but i okay i take your point so the the mm. right doing the right part is easy mm. whereas standing up for the wrong things uh, against the wrong things requires a support from the ecosystem i take your point but the counter and i'm going to be devil's advocate over here the the, the issue with that is that it's not just about now, it's not just about this last one year or these last six years, but things like tribal rights, those of marginalized communities, weaker sections of society have increasingly 
been eliminated from the public mind space. Newspapers do not give them front page coverage, television channels do not give them headline spaces uh, and this is not new. Yeah. This has been a trend we have seen over, over decades. I mean you can even date it back to perhaps around the time of liberalization yeah. when you know the private economy took uh, you know front status yeah. and everything else fell by the wayside. So, yeah. the profit motive became important and everybody who was it was the survival of the fittest. Yeah. So, why is that not freedom of expression that freedom of expression, but this not freedom of expression I am trying to understand. No, no, you, 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 I, I, if yeah. I could actually get the answer from your uh, yeah. how you frame the question. As you said that what has happened the media which are supposed to take up this yeah. or have are not taking it up or yeah. the civil society may some in some places they are doing a great job and some not they do not have the capacity or to be there everywhere right. in every present. So, that is precisely why the voice outside of the system becomes important mm -hmm. because within the system there are a lot of good people it is not the case that within the system there are not good enough good people there are a lot of good people. But a demand from outside the system becomes needs to be made. Needs to be made, and it's equally important. A system will can be seen as two. Uh, one is a supply-driven system; the other is a demand-driven system. Mm -hmm. So, a good, put a good individual within, within the system, and he, if he delivers, then that's it. Supply-driven system. If he goes, somebody else can come, and the, he will deliver as per his thinking and his capacity. And somebody else will come with whom, whose intention could be different, yes. and the whole thing could. Be. But yes. if it is a demand-driven system. So, that is why we say an excellent collector has come so, uh, completely. Yeah. So, Kanan is it is it that freedom has been stifled or is it because civil society and the media have chosen not to speak for these people? Okay. Uh, the freedom has been stifled in a particular context mm -hmm. that is what I said when it came to Jammu and Kashmir, uh, mm -hmm. the Kashmir and the 370-35A abrogation which is perfectly right well within the right of the government to do right. uh, is the legitimate uh, policy of decision of the government. But after that the reaction to it mm. is a fundamental right of any citizen to right. react to a government Absolutely. decision. Yeah. Now, when you curb that when you bar that it is not managing that it is it is not about managing that reaction, but it is about curbing completely banning that. That's right. Now that is that not stifling the f fundamental right. That is. Be. That is. That isn't is. It? Yes. Now that is a direct way. That is a very direct way. Hmm. There is another way that which is I said earlier. That is that if a person don't don't we want as a system. Let's say I I'm, I'm from I was from within the system. I would want questions to be raised. I would want questions to be raised so that I am on my toes always. So, that I do not do end up doing mistakes or I even intentionally or unintentionally. Hmm. But when you know that or you put in the fear that if you ask question then it is not I am not going to answer the question, but I am going to find out from where the question has come and try to cut down at the source itself. So, that the question does not come again. So, when that happens you do it once you do it twice it is a in a population the third person will never ask that question hmm. and that systematically reduces the space of dissent. So, it is not something you will see as you said it is not happening it has been happening for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, it could have been uh, and if it goes like this further then we will find the space shrinking the space to dissent shrinking to a point where either uh, you know say only thing you can say is in support whichever is the government it does not matter which government is uh, any government is and that is also a, a danger because it, it, it if this is the way it functions then, then it is systemic. It's systemic. So, that right to dissent has to be regained, reclaimed mm -hmm. and be it everywhere we think it is a national discourse issue or you know that is a. But some would argue uh, and we are hearing these arguments globally right now that for a strong state to ensure the delivery of goods and services and welfare uh, to all its citizens in order to do its job effectively, it cannot be impeded by dissenters. Is that something you hear amongst your colleagues as well? Yeah, I think that has always been a question of uh, you know uh, if I just extend I know it is a slippery slope argument, yeah. it is a slippery slope argument. So, if you want more development dictatorship is the answer is that what we are saying? I am asking you. 
Is that no. the way it's been working? No, no, definitely not. Mm. Because if you see any of the democracies, any of the Western yeah. or democracies that you've seen, of course, they're much older than us, much more robust than us. But they have tried, found a balance and they have found a way that the best way a sustainable development can happen, mm. especially in a diverse country like ours, mm -hmm. is only through more dis freedom of expression. More discussion. More discussion. Dissent uh, need not be seen as uh, questioning the country or, you know, it is just an alternate view what he thinks is the best for the country. I also want the best for my country, the best. The, I, there is nothing, no doubt in that, mm. the best for the country. But what I think could be slightly different from what you think or what the way I wanted to reach could be slightly different from the way you want to reach. So, if it, it's, it's a simple question. Is there is a problem? There is a, there is a thing that, we, that is troubling us. Would you want five people to think about it or only one person to think about it? If you want five people to think mm. about it, then you should allow the deliberation and the space of dissent. De dissent and deliberation so that you get one of the better solutions. All of us are thinking for the best of the country. Do you think dissent has become a loaded term in the times we live in? I don't know. I think that is something uh, we have, we ourselves have uh, put those uh, attributes. Mm. You know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's something, if we are convinced about the right to dissent, there is no reason to be worried whether it's a loaded term or not. So, what are you disillusioned with exactly today? Are you disillusioned with your service? Are you disillusioned with the state? Are you disillusioned with the political class? Are you disillusioned with civil society and the media and the citizen which is not doing its job? Um, what are you disillusioned with? Yeah. Because leaving a job where you can do good yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Indicates that there is a level of disillusionment with something bigger than you're explaining here. No, it's need, it need not be disillusionment. That, that I think is reducing the matter. It is okay. that you believe that there is a larger uh, cause to be made today. It, I could be wrong. My perceptions could be completely wrong. My convictions could be wrong. Hmm. But I would want to stand up for it. So, that belief is there in me that it is important for me to say these things. It is important for me to say these things. It, it doesn't matter if I am proven wrong down the line, down the road. it doesn't matter. Hmm. Ten years down the line, maybe whatever I say today could be proven absolutely wrong. Even, even on the, my argument for the freedom of expression of, in Kashmir, the reaction to it could be proven completely wrong. Hmm. It's absolutely fine. We, at times what happens, is that uh, what I've observed? Is that is that could you could say that I am disillusioned with that? Is that we try to curb our own, as you said, we try to curb from within that we don't want this to say because we're worried. What if I am wrong in you know in my conviction? So we don't even want to say that. Hmm. And that self doubt has created that that self doubt has, or the has created all these loaded terms. You know, or the dissent has created. Then we try want to dissociate associate ourselves with that. That I think is not good for a democracy. In a democracy, if we think that uh, dissent is important, we should be able to stand up for it. Even forget about why do we have to see it with a negative connotation for a decision, you know, that I am disillusioned, I have X, Y, Z issues and that is the reason why I am taking this decision. No, what I am saying is there is a reason to take up the matter of freedom of expression right now mm -hmm. and that to be brought and I am yeah, maybe I'm contradicting myself, but there is a reason to bring it to the fore because for the last 20 days, 22 days, we are seeing that a certain set of population has been denied their right to react. Government's decision is absolutely fine, but how to react to it? That space has to be given in a democracy. As mm -hmm. you see, you must have read about Hong Kong, what is happening. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a decision, people don't agree to it, but how have they reacted to it? They are, the protest is still happening. They are managing. They are, it's not the case that they are not arresting people or they are not trying to curb the, uh, you know, manage the, this yeah. thing. They are doing it. Mm -hmm. But the protests are still happening. They have not locked down the matter. You hear, of course, here we have other matters, geopolitical consideration, security angle, all those things are there. Fine. Do you have a lot of your colleagues from the service who empathize with your argument, who understand, who relate to it, but are just not uh, ready to d make the same decisions that you've made? What's, what's the, I mean, without taking names, obviously, what's the feedback you're getting from your fraternity? 
about your decision. You it's have critics, we know that, and they're yeah. pulling out files from the woodwork to, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, to push yeah. against you. I don't think even those are critics per se, but mm. uh, I have a lot of well wishers from within the system, uh, within the service. Uh, that actually what I came to know when I resigned. Uh, I, till then, of course, till then also I knew. Were lot. they ready to accept your resignation? They were ready, uh, they were not willing to accept in the sense they were saying, you know, they were quite firm in their belief that there is a lot that one could do from being within the system mm. and uh, especially with the you know they were, their argument was with the kind of conviction that you have uh, or the principles that you have it's even more important for you know that was the uh, way they were trying to convince so yeah that's what their reaction has been most of them most of them but it's just like uh, uh, once they understood that okay i have made the decision and uh, this is my conviction uh, be it right or wrong so they are also trying to argue out with me. Because there's no going right. back from this. Absolutely, there is absolutely. It's already, it's already done. Yeah. I, I, I would say it's already a former IAS officer, ex IAS, or mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Take away that name. What I want is, it's, it's very simple. If, if you look at it other way, you give an exam, you established yourself at an IAS. At 33, I'm saying take the IAS. I would want to re-establish myself. That's what you're doing. That's yeah. you're trying to do. N not in this sector. Uh, somewhere, anywhere. So, what do you what do you say to people who say, "Oh, there's another Shah Faisal in the making. He's quitting the service while well, he could do good, and now he wants to just join politics and make a name for himself." Yesterday, also the same question had come up. And in <laughs> fact, uh, Shah Faisal, uh, as I see him, I don't have much of interaction with him. Only once, maybe much uh, much earlier, while I was in the service, I had a con WhatsApp conversation. Other than that, I've never had a conversation with him. He came into the service to do good for his people. Hmm. And uh, then w that was also an ambition, right? So the ambition had to be achieved through writing the exam, studying hard, writing the exam, and then he r reached that ambition, hmm. which is to get into the civil service. Now you can see, say, two things. He had the political ambitions, so he resigned the service from the service. Second, he understood that he could do much more for his people through not through the administrative system, but through the political democratic system mm. of the country. Right. So, he's so, made that choice. So, he has made that what choice. What about you? No, let me, let me just come to that. So, that, that question was loaded. That is why I said, you know, uh, that is why I want to clarify for him also. It's mm -hmm. not just my case. So, isn't he, uh, doesn't he have the right, you know, if any ambition it may be. Mm. Uh, if I want to be a businessman tomorrow, uh, would you be asking the question with a similar loaded argument? Or Maybe. if 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 I want to be uh, let's say a teacher, or go to a university and become a professor and do a lot of research studies on that, so you would say oh, he quit the service because he wanted to become a researcher. Would you ask this question? So that is sort of like anybody you see in the current political system now. They are all politicians, including mm. the prime minister, including the anybody in the opposition anywhere. Yeah. So they all left something and they have come here. I don't necessarily mean politics is a bad thing. And I'm not saying that, I'm not yeah. saying that. But the argument was that, you know, are you another Shah Faisal kind of, sir? Mm. That means, you know, are... Are you going to join politics? Yeah. Or set up your own political, See, I don't know, career? Actually, till today, I had not thought about anything. I just want to clarify two things because mm. I don't agree to the fact that uh, joining politics is a bad thing that I want to state very clearly. Right, it's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, we need good people it in is politics. Yeah. Uh, it is important not just to be an opposing voice, it is also important to give an alternate choice. That is equally important. Mm -hmm. So, that is an important in a democratic system. I believe that. At the same time, what is my plan? Uh, if that is my question, that is the question. As I said in the uh, beginning before the discussion, I would, I would like to have some, you know, I would like to get back to some work mm. for now. Uh, uh, after leaving the service, which is, uh, which is connected with the public in some way so that I can contribute in very, I will not of course get the scale and uh, the exposure that the administrative services is providing, uh, mm. but I would like to work in whichever small way associated with the public and. Uh, Your home state is Kerala, right? Yeah, yeah. So where will you, will you stay in Delhi, your, your Union Territory Cadre officer? I haven't decided. I mean about the country uh, is open to you. Yeah, uh, my, my case is like. I am from Kerala, I studied in Jharkhand, uh, then I worked in Delhi, Noida and then uh, married in Haryana 
then I worked in Mizoram and then Dadra Nagar Haveli. So, my life has been like uh, spread out. Uh, spread out. So, yeah. I, I don't feel a, uh, you know, uh, that I should be here X place or Y place, uh, wherever I get a good opportunity to work. So, that is what these two things I wanted to say. I am not, uh, uh, I want to get, that is my uh, uh, wish that I would like to get into a place where I can work still connected with the public because this is very difficult to leave that. Mm. Uh, when I left the job, uh, some people, some two of them came and uh, and said, said, uh, you know, do guntai ka jameen aap lijiye, you know, just in Dadra Nagar Haveli, mm. just before I came here. So that is something I think no other, no other uh, service or mm. no other uh, profession can offer you. That mm. kind of satisfaction where people come and say that, you know, sir, you are one of ours and, you know, irrespective of the, actually where you are from. Mm. But I would still like to get that small bits of happiness of uh, being connected to this thing. At the same time, I also want to earn my livelihood. So, I would like to get uh, on are to you, that. Are there any concerns that you have? Any fear of a backlash? Any repercussions from the state, uh, the ministries, the government? Any any such concerns? No, absolutely not. I have, I have, uh, uh, I have seen uh, that uh, in, the, in a democratic system like India, we have the freedom. We have the freedom of expression. But I've in your service, there are also very strict conduct rules as well. That's why I, I put in my papers. Mm -hmm. That's why I have put in my papers. If if the, it was the other way around, I would have tried to do it by being in the service. You know, then all all that I had to face was get into uh, get few you know uh, disciplinary inquiries or something of that sort. But still, I would have got my salaries. Mm. You know, uh, continued. But I did not find uh, find that to be correct. If I may, I want to make an explicit statement, hmm. then at least I should put in my papers and uh, make it uh, being out of the system. Hmm. So that I have done. That I have done, and I would want it. Uh, I would want that voice, the matter on which that we are discussing. That is important. Hmm. That is very important for us to discuss uh, amongst ourselves and uh, day in day out, today, tomorrow, every day. That has to be because there is a set of population that needs its expression. And if we keep it, I honestly feel, you know, it is difficult. We have to give some, uh, the expression has to come out in a legitimate way in a, in a democracy and where that space has to be provided. All right. Kanan Gopinathan, thanks very much for speaking to us. I Thank didn't you. want to focus this conversation on Kashmir because I think when people like you take big decisions the way you have, it's important to get to know the person behind that decision. So hopefully this will shed some light for uh, the wire subscribers as well. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. To receive instant updates on all videos from the wire, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Pay to support independent journalism. Click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay.